Yes, uh, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Ranjit Chatterjee, Faculty of Germans and Mass Communication Department, Jagannath University, Jaipur. Let's start with today's topic, History of Press Laws in India. We are going to discuss this topic in two parts, pre-independence uh, laws and post-independence laws. So the point is, uh, why we are discussing this topic? It will give an idea to the students that what were the pre-existing laws in our country that were, that, that were there before independence and out of that, what are the, all the, are the laws that we are still continuing and why. Second, it will also give us help us to understand that uh, what are the laws that we have uh, enacted in our country post-independence and how these laws have helped in enhancing the quality and standard of press in our country and media in our country. Okay, so let's start with the very first part, pre-independence. The first point is licensing of press act. As you can see, it is a very old act that has been started by the British government in 1880. We all know that in 1780, uh, press came to India. So it took around 40 years for the British government to start enacting this act. What was the purpose of this act? Since we can see that from 1780 to, uh, to 1880, there was a huge uh, boom in uh, print media industry in our, in our country. So suddenly Britishers realized that uh, within a very uh, short span of time, the print media has started from every part of this, uh, every corner of this country. So that is why they realized that it is very important to start licensing of this press, where all the press needs to be, needs to be registered under the British government. The second is scanning app. This was basically for the purpose of curtailing the freedom of speech and expression. And as you can see, there is fourth act. Uh, it was start, started by Lord Canning and later on Vernacular Press Act was also enacted. So what was the purpose of a Canning Act? Is to register any form of print media and all the printing press in the country so that they can identify in case something wrong or something uh, they think that it should not get published that can be caught and they can actually uh, consider this I mean they can uh, keep a hold keep a check that how many printing presses are there in the country and what all kind of uh, publications they are publishing as you can see the third act press and registration of book act 1867 you will be shocked to know that this is one of the oldest act we are still carrying in our um, media laws presently we are still uh, um, have the we are going to we are continuing with this law post independence until now date and for the same purpose we have started uh, with uh, rni registrar of newspaper of india what was the purpose of this act that all the uh, printing material whether newspapers magazines books or any form of printing media including printing press should be registered and it should be licensed where the editor owner place of the printing should be um, uh, should be verified by by the government uh, officials and a proper updation of everything should be given to the government from time to time after independence we realize that this is the one act we, which we need to continue so rather than uh, making any changes in it rather than making a new act or enacting something very new what we did we continued with the same but from time to time we had made the amendments as required by the um, by the government and as required by the uh, new uh, situation of the country. The next act, as you can see, Vernacular Press Act 1878. This act was purposefully for the men, uh, for the, uh, men for uh, containing the freedom of speech and expression. Uh, this act basically stops any kind of seditious material. Although, what exactly sedition means? Sedition uh, means that anything which we write about uh, against uh, uh, British government, which they do not want uh, the public to know or anything that can actually create uh, some kind of aggression against British government uh, that uh, that kind of material should be should be cut down immediately should be banned should be stopped so that is why vernacular press act although this was considered as one of the black period for Indian media because this act completely stopped freedom of speech and expression and all the material have censored and pre-censored from time to time uh, according to their own uh, requirement the next act is a newspaper incitement to an office offense act. As you can see, incitement to an offense means any article, uh, if an article get published or anything that published that creates some kind of uh, chaos, I mean some kind of aggression in the mind of the people or people they get gathered somewhere, they started agitation, some kind of uh, you know rally agitation in any form. If they are using that information to get collected and to uh, use it against British government then that is considered to be an incitement of an offence. So again these two acts you can see these are specially started by British government to curtail the freedom of speech, speech and expression and so that uh, they can publish anything according to their own requirement. 
I would also like to add that these are the two acts which we have not continued. Let's come to the last point of Pre Independence Act, Official Secrets Act. So, Official Secret Act is also one of the act which is very old and which we are still continuing. Here, uh, official secret means any document that we cannot disclose to the public, keeping in mind the national security of the country. These documents can be identified as secret, top secret, and confidential. Means any document that has written secret, top secret, and confidential on the top of it that should not be uh, disclosed to the public because of the reasons of national security. Although this act was later on mis misused by several governments, I mean earlier it was misused by British government, later it was misused by Indian government and that is why I will just come to the next point. In 2005, we have come with RTI Right to Information Act. That doesn't mean that we have replaced or we have removed this act. This act is already there and we are still continuing with it. But yes, Right to Information is all, uh, has been added in 2005 that was for the purpose of giving um, uh, giving right to the public so that they can take out any information which they want and so that government cannot misuse the uh, right for their own whims and fancies and for the, their own purposes. Now let's come, let's take a quick uh, review on the Post-Independence Act. As you can see I have just mentioned eight major, majorly eight acts, it doesn't mean that only eight acts have been uh, uh, enacted post-independence. I mean these are the few important acts. Now let's take the first point, newspaper price and pages. I guess you all have seen the price and page has been written in the, uh, on the top of every newspaper. Earlier this was not fixed and this was you know uh, people will keep on changing the price and number of pages. So why the government need to uh, came out with this act? Because to uplift the quality of press in our country, government started providing newspapers, the paper at a very subsidized rate. So to stop the black marketing of the paper, to maintain a quality and standard, to, ma to maintain the uh, number of copies and the uh, uh, quality check in a proper way, uh, this act came into, uh, came into form. This is Price and Pages Act. Very later on this act was added with present registration of book act so that uh, uh, they can continue.